Hello everyone and welcome back to another crafty decor adventure. In today's video, I'm going to share with you guys six DIY Dollar Tree and Thrift Store decor crafts. So this is episode five in my huge I Love Spring series. I love to share with you guys how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a teeny tiny budget. And I listen, I totally believe that crafting and decorating is so good for your heart and soul. So without further ado, go ahead and plug in those glue guns, get out your glitter and paint, and let's get to crafty. For the first Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you all how to make a super adorable Easter egg topiary. And I'm going to start out with this little Dollar Tree party hat. So this is going to be in the party section where all the birthday party stuff is. And I just removed the tinsel from the top and then around the edge. The next thing I wanted to do was take four packages of Dollar Tree little plastic Easter eggs. And I am just hot gluing them directly to the bottom of this little party hat. And so you guys can stagger these as much as you want. And I will suggest to buy four to five packs because I kind of ran short and ended up having to mix some of my Easter eggs, but that was okay because, you know, they looked similar enough, I felt. Um, I mixed these with the, the glitter ones and then the kind of tie-dye looking ones, which I thought were so absolutely stinking adorable. Now you can see that I'm kind of leaving some space in between um, where my little Easter eggs I'm placing them because I want to put like some moss and some other little goodies around them. So really have fun with it. Get creative. You can space them as closely or as far away as you want. Um, and then you can just see that I'm kind of staggering them until I get to the top. So no super real rhyme, reason, or pattern to this, except for I do suggest to start at the base and then kind of slowly work your way up to the top. Oh my goodness, but I was so excited for this one. I think you guys can do this um, really on a really great budget. I actually had saw a topiary online that I fell in love with, and it was $111, you guys. And I was like, no way. I know that we can do this little Easter egg topiary on a budget. So here we are going for it. And you guys can see I did have to mix some of those little kind of glitter eggs in. But again, I thought they looked pretty cute. Um, and so really just grab some Easter eggs, whatever colors you love. Dollar Tree has so many different ones to choose from, whether it be the glam, the tie-dye, or just even some plain ones would be absolutely fabulous as well. Now here's what my party hat slash turned Easter egg topiary looked like after I had all my eggs glued on. The next thing I wanted to do was to take my hot glue and just gently run the hot glue in between the spaces of the eggs. And I'm using this Dollar Tree. It's kind of like a brown moss and honestly I really wanted the green moss but both of my stores in my town were sold out. So I know a lot of you are like, oh I can't find that at my Dollar Tree. Trust me when I say that a lot of times I can't find things either you guys. You can find green moss though at like Michael's or Hobby Lobby but again I'm just using what I had on hand and it ends up turning out really adorable in my opinion so I'm just having fun and going for it and I really do like using the extra hot glue in between the eggs with the moss because that also gives my eggs a little bit more security and I really felt like these stayed on here really well I only had one pop off at the top and I just re-glued it right back on so no big deal there so just continue to glue in between those eggs and add tons and tons of moss.
had it entirely filled up with moss. I dug into my craft stash and Dollar Tree is carrying these little cute foam kind of Easter colored berries. And so I just popped some of the berries off of the end um, of the little uh, sticks here. And I'm just kind of gently gluing them in and around the eggs. Now, of course, this step is optional. The other thing that I thought would be super cute to pop into here would be some little flowers. Um, I know on the original topiary that I saw online that was $111, um, it had like different like greenery in there. So I do end up going back in with some greenery that I had left over in my craft stash and just popping that in. But kind of take a look at what you guys have, get creative. And you can see I have that Dollar Tree pit berry. It was left over from Valentine's Day. I'm going to also pop that into there as well. But I wanted to see how it would look with my idea with the little berries. So far, so good. So I'm really pretty much crushing on this. You know, I had this in my idea to, in my head to do. I always have these like little crafty ideas in my head to do and then I'm really happy when they actually can kind of come to life. So now I'm taking that pit berry and I'm winding the pit berry in and around some of the eggs and I will tell you that you have to use like some greenery or something to kind of hot glue in between the pit berry. It was kind of giving me a little bit of trouble. Comment down below if you guys have some better ideas on this. I also hope to do um, like a glam one of these as well. And the other thing I want to note is this cute little top I found at the thrift store. We have an awesome little thrift store in town. I believe it's like three to five dollars. So I was really excited to find that. Although the little tassels that were hanging off of it, you guys, they kept getting in the way of my crafting. So I may end up having just to cut those off. So anyway, just continue to glue some goodies in between your little um, eggs. Have fun with it. Get creative and go for it. Now for the next DIY, I decided to take one of those little Dollar Tree green Easter baskets and I do suggest to pick one or two of these up. They're so great. They're a really great size to craft with and I'm just taking some white Waverly chalk paint and I ended up chalk painting the entire basket and if you just use a light little layer, it chalk paints pretty quickly and you can add one more coat if you like. Although I was pretty satisfied with how one coat looked, I did end up adding two coats. So originally I was going to do something different with this basket. But then as I was eyeing my little topiary, I really knew that I wanted to um, pop the topiary on top of the basket. So I just continued to paint the basket, let it dry, and then added one more coat. Once my basket was done, I just popped a piece of foam down inside of this and plopped my little tree on top of that. And voila, there we have it, a super fabulous decorative little Easter tree. And you guys, I'm telling you, I was so excited with how this came out. I really felt like it was pretty budget friendly, um, less than $10 to be honest with you, especially if you guys already have some of these little eggs or goodies on hand, which it's always helpful to have some little goodies left in your craft stash. I know a lot of you guys said that you have stuff left over from Easter last year. So anyway, comment and let me know what you guys think about this one and if you'll be doing a topiary. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you guys how to create this super adorable oversized Peeps Easter egg candy bar. Okay, so I saw this on Carrington Crafts, and girl, you so inspired me. I'm gonna link Carrington Crafts down below. She has this cute little page where she does these oversized, really neat projects. So you're gonna take um, two pieces of Dollar Tree poster board. Now I watched her live do this. So you guys wanna go check her out for sure. Um, and I really wasn't, I guess, paying enough attention to the sizing on this. So I just cut um, my 
candy bar size for my foam board about 14 inches but then looking back I realized I was supposed to cut it a little bit slimmer to make more of a candy bar so I guess this is a king size candy bar <laughs> anyway you want to cut two pieces of foam board the exact same size so for this one I did 14 inches and it's pretty easy to cut if you guys use a sharp um, box cutter or craft knife so here's what that looks like once you get both your pieces of foam board cut the next thing that you want to do is you want to create sides because we're making like a little candy um, bar and so then I just cut about two inches for the little candy bar sides and they're just going to measure exactly the same size as your first two pieces of foam board I hope this is making sense to you guys sometimes I feel like I'm not explaining things completely correctly but you're going to cut two pieces for the long side of your candy bar and then you'll cut two little short pieces for the other side now if you guys are nervous about doing a foam board craft i want to tell you guys to take a deep breath i've never attempted this before in my life but i was so inspired when i saw carrington crafts do this oh my goodness thank you so much for the inspiration and again don't forget to check her out down below um but I was like, oh, I have to try this. Okay, so then here's my two little side pieces and then I just measured for the other side piece for the other part of my candy bar. And here's another thing that I thought for you guys, if you're working with kiddos and maybe you don't want to like do the whole box shape and you just wanna make this really simple, you could do a fun little craft and also this would be great you know if you're doing like a teacher board or maybe you're doing a board at church um, and you don't want it to be have this like three-dimensional thing happening you guys could just do a flat little candy bar too so you could probably do several of these now I'm gonna go ahead and using some hot glue I'm gonna begin to put my box together and so I'm just starting with the longer edge and then gluing the little sides on and then also be really careful with your glue this part was a little bit tricky I kind of glued my box down to my work surface a couple of times I do have a puppy pad <laughs> underneath it for my little puppy um, but so that was a little bit tricky for me I think next time you know I'll be a little bit better at it since I haven't tried this before I probably should have tried it before I showed you guys but hey you guys can learn along with me it wasn't as hard as I thought it was gonna be you know I get really nervous when it comes to measurements and all of that stuff but you guys go for it and again if you didn't want to do the harder part of making the box you could just do like a flat candy bar I think that would be super adorable as well and so the reason for a fun oversized candy bar too is if you guys are decorating an Easter tree or maybe you're just decorating like for fun I think this is such a fun idea and so I just want to thank um, Carrington Crafts for the inspiration for this so now I'm gonna go ahead and just put my little topper on now that I have all my little sides put on and again just use your hot glue mine got a little dribbly but it's not a big deal because you're gonna go over it with some other goodies okay so I'm taking my glue stick this is a Dollar Tree glue stick I think it worked pretty good and then I'm going to use some uh, tin foil aluminum paper and you want to put the tin foil um, shiny side down that's the way she explained to do it and so hey that's what I'm gonna do because <laughs> hers came out really cute um, and so then I'm just gonna glue the sides as well now this was really tricky and I'm not sure I did the most awesome job but again this is my first one so maybe next time I'll do a little bit better of a job so then I'm gonna take my little foil and I'm going to wrap it kind of up and then I realized it'd be a lot easier if I just wrapped it down first and then pulled the other foil over so that's a little tip um, I have for you guys on this part is to wrap that large piece down that flap down and then tuck the little sides over that's what worked for me I probably need to go back and watch the other video um, but I usually watch a tutorial maybe here and there and then I'll just try to go for it if I do end up recreating something so anyway but now I'm just gonna tuck these little foil pieces over and then there we have that Okay, this is really cute yellow and white polka dot paper. It is in the gift section at Dollar Tree. So I just cut a giant piece of that and that's going to go in the center, kind of like as our candy bar wrapper. 
And what I want to do is make like a little peeps candy bar. So the next thing I did was just add foil to the bottom part to kind of really make it look like a candy bar. And so this is the exact same process I went through um, with the top part. And please don't mind the back of my candy bar. Okay, hopefully nobody comes to my house and looks behind my craft because <laughs> it's a hot mess, honestly, you guys, on the back part. But it's really cute in the front. The next thing I wanted to do is just fold my paper over to kind of fit on the top part of my candy bar here and that was a little bit tricky but once you guys get that on i suggest gluing pretty quickly underneath those front flaps and that way it doesn't wiggle around as you try to pull the paper over to the other side and again this is just some gift wrap paper that was in the dollar tree party section garland this comes like in just one piece of a garland at Dollar Tree and I'm gonna cut it apart because I just want to separate the little bunnies out and then I'm going to add this cute little label to the top and this was just in the Dollar Tree poster board section so I added like this label to the top to try to make it look a little bit more like a candy bar so this is how it looks after I did that and then to get your bunnies on you're just going to hot glue them um, and that's really easy peasy. Do be careful though, because like when you get up to the ears, that can be a little bit tricky. You may want to go in sections and just do the bottom part, lay it down and then finish the top part. I did the whole thing, but I work with hot glue a lot. So my fingers are pretty tough. I always try to give you guys a side note on different things like that. So get your little bunnies on, choose whatever color you love. Oh my goodness, this was so fun. I hope to make some more of these and like maybe different kinds of candy bars would be fun too. Um, maybe make one for my daughter that is like a little Sour Patch Kid one because I did, she, that's her favorite candy bar. So anyway, Dollar Tree is also carrying these pastel poster board letters. I was so excited when I saw those. I just knew they would be so great for some springtime crafting. So then at the top, I'm just spelling out peeps. Now there were not two P's on that poster board. At least I didn't see them. So I just cut an R apart and made a P. Now this is also a cute little detail to add that was in our Dollar Tree poster board section was these little um, doodly dad dots <laughs> and they came already in strips. So I thought that was so perfect and vibrant and festive. And there are um, two sections on either side so you can even kind of wrap around your candy bar a little bit. And then here's how it looks. Hey, there's my giant oversized king size Peeps candy bar. Thank you to Carrington Crafts for the super awesome inspiration. I always love it when I just see something I'm inspired so I want to thank you for that and go check her out um, down below she's got some really cool crafts that she does and I think you guys will be inspired as well okay and then there's how it turned out popped into my little Easter setting you guys comment and let me know what you think and are you going to be making a giant oversized candy bar I can't wait to see what everybody's gonna be up to Dollar Tree DIY. I want to share with you all a fun and fabulous little, this is going to be kind of like a Mackenzie Childs inspired set of Easter eggs and a bunny rabbit. So I'm starting out and these are just the little wooden um, cutouts that are in like the kids crafting section at Dollar Tree. They come with like the little markers. And so I'm starting out with my Waverly White chalk paint and I am giving them two coats. You could even go three coats on this if you want completely full coverage or you could flip them over where you can't see like the little black lines and there's just like numbers on the other side. So the next thing I wanna do is take some tape and just tape off. What I wanna do is um, create like some little diamonds in the center or like a little Harlequin pattern in the center. So I'm just taking my painter's tape and taping that off. And you guys can really do pretty much any pattern that you want. And I think this would also be a really fun craft to do with kiddos. Um, grab some paint. Walmart has really inexpensive paint. It's the Apple Barrel paint. It's like 38 cents, I think. 
Um, and so for that one, I did the little Harlequin. And then for this one, I'm going to do stripes, which I don't know why I try to paint stripes. I'm really terrible at it. My hands don't stay steady like I need them to. Um, I should probably just leave the tape on. So note to self and note to you guys if you have a hard time with that. The next thing I wanted to do was the little checks on the bunny. So I'm going to do kind of like a Mackenzie Childs inspired checkerboard pattern. I started in the center with the lines going one way and then the lines going back up and down. <laughs> Now for the next part, I'm adding the paint. And this part is just so fun to me. It's so therapeutic. I love painting, especially these little projects that I know aren't a big deal that don't have to be perfect. So don't be nervous about painting. Take a deep breath, grab a paintbrush and some colors and have fun. I'm using kind of this lime green and hot pink. I have an idea in mind for my Easter tree that I'm gonna do and I'm super excited to share it with you guys. So I'm just doing the green at the top and the green on the other side. And then I'm gonna do some little pink Harlequin in the center. Um, so I'm excited also to hear what colors you guys are gonna be decorating for Easter with. Comment down below and let me know. Now moving on, I'm attempting to paint some stripes and I'll let me tell you, I'm just attempting. So I'm doing some pink stripes to start out with and then I go in with some green. I also like to mix in some white with some of this paint. Um, and this was just some Arteza craft paint that I had left over. It's actually, I've had it for a couple of years. So it does last quite a while. It's really pigmented. Um, and I do have to even kind of water it down just a little bit. So I'm just using a little bit of white dabbed in there to give it some dimension. Um, and then I'm adding in some green. You guys can tell, forgive me please for my lines. They're so weebly wobbly, but have fun with it, you guys. It's just a fun little Easter egg craft. Go for it, get creative, and don't be nervous. Just grab that paintbrush, get out there and paint some fun things. Now, for my bunny, I thought I was gonna do green checks, but I decided just to go with the traditional Mackenzie Childs black and white check. So I'm just doing black and white. So you go every other one. And then I like to take my brush and drag my brush with some white and a little bit of gold. And that kind of gives it some dimension as well. So here's that little technique that I was talking about where you take and you kind of drag your brush so you can kind of put like a little bit of black on one side of your a paintbrush and a little bit of white and just kind of drag it in to the square. I like to kind of lighten it up and do it that way. Um, this step is definitely totally optional and if you even have a little bit of gold, if you'll see like the Mackenzie Childs the way that they're painted, theirs is really, really hand painted. I have um, one of their cups and I always look at it for reference when I am really hard on myself thinking, oh, that's not perfect enough. If you look at theirs, theirs isn't perfect either. It really is supposed to look very kind of hand painted and handmade. Okay. And then, so once I have all that finished, I'm adding just a couple of little finishing touches and then, um, you know, adding in some of that gold as well. 
And so this I thought was super fun. And really, you guys think outside the box. If you're wanting to do a pink bunny, go for a pink bunny. I think I'll do that next. I think that'd be super fun and cute and creative to do like a little pink bunny, a little green bunny. Um, but only so many things I can do at once here. So I am adding a little bit of dimension also to my eggs with a bit of black paint. Now, last but not least, I love to go in with this gold paint pen, and it's called the Deco Art Paint Pen, um, um, and it's really, really, really awesome. It does take a little bit of work to figure out how the tip comes out, but once you get that down, you just push it down, and then the paint kind of drops down into it. Anyway, it's this gold, and it makes your um, <laughs> Mackenzie Childs Inspired projects look so much better. So I kind of outlined everything with that gold, and then I felt like that was just, you know, a little bit better and kind of cleaned up some of my lines just a little bit more. And so here's how it is popped into my little two-tier tray here, which I found at Target last year with a little scalp. I just thought that was really cute. And then the Easter candy corn is it Tuesday morning, you guys. Oh my goodness. I meant to get some of that last year, never did, and then was so bummed out when I missed out on it. For the next DIY, I decided to deck out this super adorable little Dollar Tree bunny. Now you guys, if you can find these bunnies, I think they're such a great deal. They're a nice size and they're going to be so fun to craft and decorate with. So for this little guy, I'm going to tie this little Dollar Tree plaid ribbon around his neck to give him some color, but then I want to jazz him up kind of in that Mackenzie Childs inspired idea with the little Harlequin ribbon. Now this Harlequin ribbon is from Hobby Lobby. Use your coupon and you guys can really get a great little deal on it. Don't forget to dovetail your ends on your um, crafting because it really gives it a high-end look. And when I mean dovetail, I mean cut that little triangle or just give it a nice little side cut to really make it look cute. Now I'm adding in this cute little bow and I just tied a quick little bow around his neck and then there he's already looking in my opinion fabulous and jazzy and then get creative so I'm just taking this blue gingham ribbon Dollar Tree also has this it's in the regular crafting section not in the Easter section I'm making a double shoelace bow which is just a bow like you would tie your shoelaces and then there you have that and I'm going to apologize to you guys in advance because I do have allergies already I can't believe it so anyway I'm popping that cute little um, ribbon on to the top of my bow just to kind of really jazz it up and you guys can just get so creative with this idea and just use whatever colors you love whatever ribbon you have in your stash you don't even have to go out and buy any ribbon I'm sure you guys have some pretty little ribbon laying around um, or you could even do roses around his neck and then I wanted to add a carrot because this little bunny is hungry so he has to have a cute little carrot so have fun with it get creative and go for it So I was on the Mackenzie Childs website getting inspired for some Easter crafting and I was like, oh, I love their little bunny. Their bunny was $99 though, which was a bit out of my budget just for a little Easter stuffy. So I thought, you know what? We can make one with some Dollar Tree supplies. And okay, this one probably isn't as fancy as theirs, but I really think it's cute and on a budget. Um, I think these are going to be so fun. And if you're going to do a large Easter tree, you could even make up a couple of these and kind of set them in and around your Easter tree, which is what I I'm going to be doing although I'll probably have to put them in my Easter tree because my dog Benji Bear went crazy over them if you guys saw my last video in the hall he was the star <laughs> so here's how it came out so fun and fabulous oh my goodness on a budget and how happy is this little bunny he's ready for an Easter parade
And then for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you guys a really super easy little craft that you can do with these Dollar Tree eggs on a steak. So I'm just taking my Deco Art paint pen and I'm just going to basically outline all of the pretty designs because I really think that these designs on here are super adorable. So the Deco Art paint pen is in this gold color and you guys can buy other colors but I'm using gold so I just thought that would be perfect and I'm just outlining it to just really jazz it up and give it a fabulous appeal. And then for the next part of this DIY to really jazz up our little eggs on a steak, this part is of course optional, but I had to add a bow. You guys guessed it. So I'm just using my easy bow maker and you guys can find these on Deco Exchange or at Michael's Craft Store. Um, and so they're about $13, I believe, but they really make it fun and easy to make a bow if you're just not wanting to think hard and you just want to pop your ribbon in there. I'm tying off my little quick and easy bow here with a pipe cleaner. I'm going to give it a nice little fluffing and then tie it on to the base of my egg steak. Now you guys can really have fun with this and make a super huge over the top fancy bow. You could add greenery to it. You could just go so crazy with it. Um, I kind of stopped with just the bows on this, but I did end up adding in some pink satin ribbon to this bow because I want to pop these into my Easter tree. I believe that's where I'm going to go with this. Um, and so I just want to see, you know, the colors that I'm going to be using. And I'm also using the Easy Bow Maker to make this cute little Dollar Tree bow. So Dollar Tree has this polka dot ribbon. It's fun and fabulous. You guys make a fun little bow, get creative, make it wonderful. Let's celebrate Easter in grand style. We can do it on the budget as well. <laughs> Now here's that pretty and pink ribbon that I'm going to tie on to my little egg stick. This is so easy to do. Just tie it right onto the center like you're tying a shoelace. And then voila, you have a fabulous little egg steak. Make sure though that you always fluff your bow. And by fluffing your bow, I mean pull those loops out, dovetail your ends, give it a little curly cue, just finish up your work. It's really gonna make a huge difference. Even if it's just you that's looking at it, you'll be a lot happier with the finished results. So here's how that one looks. <laughs> I don't know what it is about pink and Easter, but we're gonna be going for a little bit of pink here and there for sure. And I do love pink, I'm a pink girl. So I'm adding it also into the center part of this little stake as well and I thought it looked really cute with the Harlequin ribbon and I realized too that neither one of these like little eggs had that much pink in it but honestly for Easter I feel like all pastel goes I feel like it can almost all go together and it kind of offsets um, some of those other colors so Anyway, here's how we came out with these. I have two more of these eggs to do and I may offset the ribbon in some different styles, but how cute did they turn out? Oh my goodness, you guys, I'm just so loving this one. So 
as always, I ask that you guys comment and let me know what was your favorite DIY in this video and which one will you be recreating? I cannot wait to see your creations on our Facebook group page and to hear what you guys are up to. I am so excited for a new season of crafting and I do love to start early because I like to go over the top with my decor and so making all these little handmade goodies just makes it so much more fun and then I already have them ready once it's time to decorate. So. If you're kind of wrapping up your Valentine's Day um, crafting, you may want to go ahead and try some of these fun and fabulous little projects. So thank you all so much for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafting decor adventure. I hope you guys are totally inspired to craft and decorate some new treasures for your home. If you all are new, welcome. I'm Olivia with Olivia's Romantic Home, and I'd love to share with you guys how you can make your home's booty gorgeous on a teeny tiny budget. Listen, y'all don't have to break the bank to have a fabulous, amazing home. I would also also love to invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's totally free. Punch that bell and that will update you every time I post a new video. And I post three videos a week, which I usually do a ton of DIY, crafting, decorating, a little bit of baking and tidying along the way. I also have Olivia's Romantic Home Facebook page. If you guys want to pop over there, I share several DIY videos a day over there as well, as well as I have a free group page. You guys can join, socialize and post photos of your home decor and DIY projects over there as well. Now, if you want to say good morning with me. I say a good morning cup of coffee with you on my Instagram story every single morning and I have these cool little Dollar Tree prayer cards you guys are all loving so check out that out as well. I even have a TikTok. Oh lord don't tell my kids. <laughs> anyway my kids know they actually help me with it. So anyway I love y'all to the moon and back. I can't wait for our next crafting and decorating adventures. Also what do you guys think about my thrift store outfit of the day? It's this cute little peasant top and I was pretty excited to find it. I found it for like three bucks. So anyway I love y'all. I can't wait for the next video. Until then, remember, be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another. And we'll talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.